Alright guys, welcome to this page of the notes and now here's what we're going to do. We're going to take everything we've learned so far in this section, section 3, and we're now going to apply it to graphing a rational function. Before we do that though, I just want to confirm something that we think we discovered on the previous page, and it's this. When it comes to transformations, that is A, H, and K, the general formula for the reciprocal function this guy right here. And look at that, shouldn't be any surprise at all. We were pretty sure the h needed to be in the denominator with the x. Sure enough, there it is. And we thought we were pretty sure the k was some number plus or minus tacked on to the end of the reciprocal function, and there it is. All right, so with that in mind, here we go. Let's take a look at a rational function, rational function, Go ahead and take a look at the graph of this guy. We want to graph this function. Now, I love these problems because actually it's a little bit like putting together a puzzle. You're going to find several of the pieces. You're going to see how those pieces fit together to give you the graph of the rational function. The first, pe the, the first pieces you need to find are your vertical and your horizontal asymptotes. But we already know that from h and k. So I take a look at this guy right here, I see I have a negative 4. So h is minus 4. And I see right here I have a plus 2, so that means that k has to be a positive 2. Now remember, h is the opposite. Since I have a negative 4 in the function, that means that positive 4 gives me division by 0. So my vertical asymptote needs to be at positive 4. Let's put that in there. One, two. One, two, three, four, right here is my vertical asymptote. So that's the first piece of my puzzle when graphing these rational functions. Then I know that k is 2. That's going to take my horizontal asymptote and shift it up two units. Well, that would be to right here at y equals 2. So horizontal asymptote y equals 2 because k is 2. And right here is my vertical asymptote because uh, at x equals 4, and it's at x equals 4 because h is a negative 4, right? And your horizontal shift is always the opposite direction of the value of h. Or you could think of it this way, right? What gives you division by 0? Positive 4 gives you division by 0. Any value that gives you division by 0 is going to show up on the graph as a vertical asymptote. So x equals positive 4 will be my vertical asymptote. Now, where does the graph go? How do I draw this graph in here? Okay, you need to find a point. The easiest point to find is where you cross the x-axis. So we need one point. You always Every time, you're going to need to find one point, and the easiest point to find is where you cross the x-axis, which is when y equals 0. All right, so what you're going to do is you're going to set y equal to 0 and solve for x to find the x-intercept. Right? Really easy to do, right? You just let y, f of x, right? y equals 0, solve for x. That will give you the x-intercept. All right, well, my function is f of x is equal to 2 over x minus 4 plus 2. Well, f of x is y. Okay, now I'm going to let y be 0, right? When y is 0, right? When y is equal to 0, you cross the x-axis. So by setting y equal to 0, I'm finding the x-intercept. So 0 is equal to 2 over x minus 4 plus 2. I need to multiply, since I'm dividing by x minus 4, I'll multiply. Actually, I don't want to do that first. I apologize. Sorry, it's the reverse order of operations. Whew, I almost goofed. First, plus 2, move it to the other side. 
So I have minus 2 is equal to 2 over x minus 4. All right, awesome. Now what I do, right, I have division by x minus 4, so I need to multiply it to the other side. So negative 2 times x minus 4 is equal to 2. Distribute the negative 2, minus 2x plus 8 is equal to 2. Almost there. Subtract the 8 to the other side. Minus 2 is equal to negative 6. That's a minus 2x. Don't want to lose my x. Divide both sides by negative 2. And there we go, I get x is equal to 3. This is an x-intercept. So I have the point, right, x is 3 when y is 0. So 3, 0. All right, let's go plot that point, right? We set y equal to 0. We know we're finding an x-intercept. x is equal to 3. x is equal to 3 when y is 0. So that's my point, 3, 0. Let's throw it on here. Let's see, 1, 2, 3, 0, it's that guy right there. I'll graph it in blue. What you've got to do now is piece these, uh, put these pieces together, all right? I cannot touch the asymptotes, all right? So I need a graph that comes really close to this line and really, really close to this line, but goes through that point. Well, there's only one way to do that. The only way to go through this point without touching this line or this line is if the function looks like that. And when it comes to the reciprocal function, whichever direction this guy is headed, it will come from the opposite direction on the other side. Since it's headed to negative infinity, on this side, it's got to come from positive infinity. Again, you cannot touch the asymptotes, and so that right there is the perfect sketch. All right, um, I don't know, there's a lot going on here. We'll try a few more on the next pages of the notes. Believe me, you'll catch on. I love these problems because, like I said, you're kind of finding the pieces of the puzzle, and you got to put all the pieces together to get the final picture. So, head on over to the next page of the notes. I'll meet you guys there, and we'll try a couple more of these.